Guys, you all give us some excellent questions to debate. One that keeps coming up, whose undefeated record is more impressive, Izzy or Khabib? Nick and I are going to debate that right now. What's up, Barn Hill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So Nick, as you know, one of our favorite things to do on this channel is engage in the comments, yeah. uh, especially when we do the lives, when we drop the videos and we get a chance for everybody to log on and, yeah. and you know watch it at the same time and discuss and debate, um, yeah. point out mistakes that maybe we make here yeah. and there and, yeah. and tell us that they think we're right on certain things. So it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing it. Um, the fans come up with some really amazing questions, some really good points of view, and a lot of times even have changed my mind before on predictions and yeah. certain things I didn't see. Uh, one question that keeps coming up, and I think it's because Habib is now seemingly retired, uh, polished off an incredible career, and you have Izzy who shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. In fact, is moving up to 205 to test himself at a heavier weight class. Uh, the question keeps arising, whose undefeated record is most impressive? Now, obviously, Habib has won more fights. He's 29-0 mm -hmm. and 0 to Izzy's 20-0. and 0. But when you look at since they've had the belt and meaningful competition, I think it's pretty close, don't you? Very close. And, you know, Izzy is... It's, it's crazy because those are the only two guys we can really have this conversation about. Right. It's They're, so uncommon in MMA for somebody to be undefeated. Yeah, very uncommon. There's only a couple of people out there that are at the highest level, and, and these two are the, the two best doing it, doing it the best. I think that um, Khabib's record is fantastic, especially towards the tail end. He really started to uh, take, some, take some great victories over some very worthy opponents, and they were obviously all for the titles. But it seemed to me that Izzy's march to the title was a pretty difficult road and he you know in hindsight we're, we realized just how tough it, the road was for him to get to the belt i mean what was his, his first fight was Mel marvin vittori right yeah, that was yeah the split decision uh, yeah that was his only split decision victory and then you see how good vittori has, has become since right. then kind of like the conor mcgregor at 145 you know he beats up some guy named max holloway in, in his second fight in the ufc and max goes on to be the best featherweight in the world he beats dustin poirier a couple fights after that poirier is now the the, the uncrowned king at 155 pounds right. so you know he kind of went through a murderer's row at, before people knew of knew them as the murderer's row that they are and uh, izzy kind of did the same thing you know, he's had some very tough matchups on his way to the title, but he got the title so early and has been running with it and kind of clearing out the 185 division. And, you know, the strength of schedule does play into it. And 55 is the toughest division in the UFC and in the entire sport. But 185 is a very stacked division right now. Sure. And Izzy didn't duck or, or hide or take any easier fights for himself that he could have. He, In fact, he was going after the toughest guys, the, the biggest... Um, uh, boogeymen in the division and people like Yoel Romero and was able to, you know, beat those types of people. So I think that uh, there's a strong case to be made that uh, quality is going to go over quantity in this 20 and 0 versus 29 and 0. Yeah, it's a great point. And there's certainly quality within Khabib's, uh, oh, sure. you know, hit list or his, the notches on his belt, so to speak. Um, you know, when you look at, at ways in which they finish mm -hmm. opponents, Izzy's got a very high knockout ratio, 20 and 0 with 15 knockouts. Right. No submission victories on his record, but hey, he just got his purple belt from Andre Galvo. So yeah. maybe maybe <clears throat> we'll see the evolution of Izzy. Maybe he'll get one or two subs before his career's over. Yeah. And then you look on the flip side of that with Habib, you see a nice mix of subs and KO slash TKO, 11 subs. I believe he's got eight uh, TKOs. Now, a lot of those are ground and pound that, that happen from, you know, wrestling and grappling. takedowns and, and grappling exchanges. But let me just run through the hit list of both of these guys real quick. So prior to Habib winning the belt, he beat Edson Barbosa, Michael Johnson, and Rafael Dos Anjos. Great. Very impressive. Before Izzy won the belt, he beat Anderson Silva, Derek Brunson, Brad Tavares, and Marvin Vittori, who, as we said, has really come on as of late. Yeah. So those are very tough fights leading up to the belt. Now, once they've had the belt, Habib has been around for so long, but you, he's had a lot of periods of time where there was layoffs, there was missed weights. If there's anything you can really criticize about mm -hmm. Habib, it's that he, early on at least, did have some issues with the weight cutting and there was some pullouts. You don't really see that a lot with Izzy, but since... Uh, uh, he took the belt in the in the undisputed match 
between him and Ally Aquinta, he's defeated McGregor, Poirier, and Gaethje. Yeah, finished Com- all of them. Finished all three of them by sub. Compare that to Izzy. Uh, he took the belt um, in the fight against Gaslam. It was for the vacant title. Beat Robert Whitaker, uh, Yoel Romero, and Paulo Costa. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Romero fight was a bit of a laid egg, but Costa and Whitaker was nothing short of spectacular. And, it, and the Romero fight wasn't really Izzy's fault. He did try to bring the fight. Romero just wasn't a good dance partner for him. That happens. And uh, unfortunately, two people have to make for a horrible fight, and that one made for it. But if I had to place blame on one individual for that fight, it would be Yoel and not Izzy, because Izzy was trying to do something. Right. Whereas Yoel just kind of stood there and blew his last opportunity at a title. And has Um, moved on to Bellator since. Yeah, and by the way, I can't wait to see him fight. And Rumble Johnson, it seems like that's the the direction they're going. And hopefully Scott Coker sees everybody wanting to see that fight and uh, makes it happen. Uh, If... Could be, or if Izzy makes it to twenty nine and zero, obviously he will have the goat status. He no will, question, because it'll be nine more title fights and title defenses and potentially champ champ status, which is something Habib have never done. Uh, I think that Habib is rare in the sense that he did kind of clear out the division. There's really only one fight that we didn't get that we were promised, which right. is Tony Ferguson. And now I kind of understand, even though MMA math doesn't work, that that fight's just never going to happen. And we kind of can can rest easy knowing that I think Khabib would get the job done if yeah. he fought Tony Ferguson. But it's it's never going to end if we just keep going, well, this guy's new now and he's at the top. And so at some point we have to say, okay, Khabib cleared out the division while it was while he was in it and there was nobody else left for him to fight. There is still some things for Izzy Adesanya to do at 185. Right. And obviously a f- clean slate at 205 where he has so many more opponents. And I, if you ask me, all roads are leaning, leading to John Jones. And I think that fight, if, you're, if, if it was me, I would hope that fight would be for the very first title fight at 225. Because for some right. reason, yeah. I would love to see that division become a thing. And I think that there's a lot of heavyweights and light heavyweights that would wind up in that division. And it would it would favor a lot of them and make for some really good matchups. Leave the really massive guys that are, that are cutting to 265 to fight each other. But the guys, even like Stipe Miocic, cuts, or, you know, he weighs in at 230-something, 230 and yeah. a little bit over. I mean, it's kind of tough for him to, to fight guys that are coming down from 290. It's just well, there's a major difference in the size of body between Francis Ngannou, Derek Lewis, and Stipe. Yeah, and Mark Hunt. No. Yeah. And Stipe yeah. has proven that he can defeat them right. and has defeated Francis Ngannou in spectacular fashion. But that said, a 225 division, I think, would be a fantastic yeah. division. I think it would make for a lot of really competitive fights. It would. Uh, and it would allow the heavyweight. The, the one complaint I always have about the heavyweight division is, but one, those guys hit so hard. They take so much damage and there's big layoffs in between fights is that the wheels just turn so slowly mm-hmm. in heavyweight um, that I would like to see some of that grouping come down to a 225 division and let the really big dogs, yeah. you know, go at it. The ones that are cutting weight to get to 266, you know, right. if you need a towel to weigh in at heavyweight, you're then big, uh, then big, you're a big boy. So. Yeah, and, and, and like you said, that's a great, the great thing. We can't have the heavyweight title, the most coveted strap in all mixed martial arts, all combat sports, the UFC's heavyweight title being contested for once a year or once every 15 months or something like that. Yeah. We need to have light heavyweight and heavyweight held kind of in the same regard. And if, you know, whatever, if we want to make 265 super heavyweight and then make 225 Call it cruiserweight, just like or, boxing does. They have, they have light heavyweight and then there's cruiserweight right. and then there's heavyweight. Why it's like that, I have no idea. But you could just steal that from boxing yeah, and follow we've taken that enough. model. We've yeah. taken enough from boxing. And I, I think that... Uh, people would respect that. You'd see a lot of athletic bodies fit right into that division, and I think it would make for some really great fights. And I think that they should start that division with a fight between John Jones and Izzy. Yeah. Because I think you'd see Izzy come in somewhere around the two hundred five, or you know, the two hundred six, two ten, two fifteen range. He'd put on a little bit of size, and then John Jones would probably come in right above two twenty. Yeah, I think so. And you know, th- that's kind of circling that point and taking that and circling back to which of these two undefeated fighters has the more impressive resume? 
Um, you just go pros and cons. Pro is Izzy is willing and has already signed a bout agreement to fight at 205. Yeah. He, he believes that he has cleared out the division, um, even though there are some fun fights still to be had yeah. at 185. Uh, he's got he's got an agreement uh, about agreement signed with Jan Blahovich. So he's mm-hmm. going to go test himself at a weight class that's 20 pounds heavier than he's used to fighting at. And he's a small guy for his yeah. weight class. So I would say that would be a pro for Izzy. If I'm talking about a pro for Khabib now, that would be the fact that 155 historically and certainly right now is the most competitive murderer's row division that there is. Uh, also another pro for Habib is he's just one of those people that you know what he's going to do to beat you. You know how he's going to do it. He's got emphatic victories and you can't stop him from doing what he wants to yeah. do. When you see uh, like a fight between Romero and Izzy, a fight, by the way, that he didn't have to take. Mm-hmm. He took that because he wanted to stay active because legacy means something to Izzy. He said, legacy and names on my resume mean more than belts to me. I love that approach. Romero is a tough, tough fight for somebody like Izzy, especially we all thought he was going to use his wrestling. Um, you know, that he wasn't able to really shine and be the Izzy. And again, I think, I think Romero has some blame there. But I, I would say that Habib has a slight edge on being able to impose his will regardless of what the opponent wants to do. Yeah. So I would say, but then again, you know, you talk about strength of schedule and obviously 155 is more difficult than 185. But look at the 185 names, Gastelum, Whitaker, Romero, Costa, Silva. Anderson Silva, um, Derek Brunson. I mean, these are all killers. It, it, the, the, the 155 division is deeper, mm-hmm. but the cream of the crop is the, the top five and both are, make no mistake about it, are, are absolute savages. Very, yeah, very close in competition. I mean, uh, it, it was very, it, it's almost impossible to see two undefeated fighters fight for a title. And we saw that we yeah. we got to see uh, Izzy go in there and defend his title against Paulo Costa. Uh, you know nobody can really say the same thing for 155. There's not another undefeated guy down there. And I so, think that speaks to the division of yeah, how tough it is. Yeah, it's it, it for sure. And you know I was thinking in my brain like, who's the top ten of 155? And I can name ten guys that are top ten fighters that weigh 155 pounds on fight uh, on, on weigh in day. But I don't know if they are actually in that specific top ten of on the rankings, right? Of, yeah. Or wherever, you know, it's so it's so stacked. And then you wind up saying fifteen names, and you're like, well, I thought they were all in the top ten. I guess some of those maybe did trickle into the fifteens, but they're still just an absolute hammer. Yeah, I mean, if you a perfect example of that would be Rafael uh, Rafael Faziv. Yeah. He's number Monster. 22 in the 155 really? division. I looked up I his even standing. Know, yeah. I didn't even know they went that, that yeah, Well, they the UFC official rankings don't, but they do like the, the world rankings on some other sites. He's ranked in the uh, right around the 22 wow. uh, position. And you saw what he just did to Hinato Moicano. Uh, he's somebody that we talked about, obviously, before could beat any 55 run any given night with his striking. It's yeah. very crisp. It's the most pure... Muay Thai, I think you'll see in all of MMA right now. So, sure. yeah, 155 has, has guys outside of the top 15 that could be. I mean, Islam Makachev is number 15, I yeah. believe, and they're talking about him contesting for a title. 185 is not so much that way. It's kind of like there's a grouping at the top, and then everybody else is kind of a, a couple steps below. Um, you know, cons for Khabib, he, he did have some trouble with the weight. Uh, he didn't fight as often. Mm-hmm. Uh, even when he fought McGregor, he fought McGregor after a long layoff from McGregor. Um, you know, so so it, you do have uh, the inconsistencies a little bit. Izzy seems to be a little bit more active. Uh, obviously, Habib has nine more wins than Izzy. I think you really only need to look at the last seven to ten wins, though, and compare those. Yeah, it's like boxing. If you have a guy who's sixty and zero, you know, you can pretty much discount the first seven or first um fifty fights. Right. So if you look at the last ten, that's not the way it is in MMA, by the way. But it's all tough fights. But I think the the once the, you look at the UFC schedule for both men, you'll see that they're pretty comparable. And my final answer for it's not I guess it's not even really a question. It's kind of just a debate and a discussion. But my final decision will be made based on how Izzy performs against Blahovich. I think if Izzy can defeat Jan Blahovich and score a, a, the champ champ status, get a belt at a weight class that's 20 pounds heavier and be a he, when he's already light for the weight class, will to me make his undefeated record 
more impressive than Habib's. Yeah, that will definitely be a big notch in, in his in his belt. And I think that what basically what's going to determine this for me, and I'll be we'll be able to revisit this. But Khabib is essentially done. We assume that he is not taking any more fights. He's going to end his career at 29-0. and 0. A fantastic career, especially in the UFC. The 12 or 13 fights he had in the UFC were incredible. Uh, but, but Izzy's not done yet. So we can't really say that his... We can't really compare the two until both are finished. Yeah. And if Izzy continues on the trajectory that he's going on, even if he only fights five more times and makes it to 25-0... and 0, and all title defenses yeah. from there, I'm giving the the nod to Izzy. And I think that, you know, those are the two guys that were able to break through and do the impossible in MMA, yeah. which is carry a undefeated record. And, you know, I would say that Khabib uh, would, ha- would probably agree with me on that. If he's able to go knock in five more title defenses in two weight classes, potentially three, you have to give him the GOAT status. You have to. Yeah, we, I, and it's so amazing that we're fans of MMA in a time where you have two dominant undefeated champions like like Izzy and Habib. You know what I will say is in in history we haven't seen it in the UFC and in mixed martial arts and I don't think that it's going to become a norm that you're going to see undefeated fighters and you but I will say that the the UFC finding people so early and getting people going and and throwing them into main event slots after you know 5 10 fights in the UFC is going to lend to some people having shorter careers that are more meteoric rises. You get to ten and zero, boom, you're in a you're on the main card. Yeah, thirteen and zero, you're in the co-main. Fifteen and zero, your main event. If you can win five or six fights and get a title in there, you might be able to retire twenty and zero. There, you're going to see some more guys be able to do it. Whereas you have the guys of old like Anthony uh, Smith, Lionheart Smith, who's had seventy five fights. Right. There's just no way you're going to win all seventy five of those in the sport of mixed No, that arts. that's totally impossible. Yeah. Well, guys, let us know in the comments. Great questions. Keep them coming this was a fun uh debate to have at the end of the day israel adesanya habib whichever way you have it whoever's undefeated record is most impressive heart it, it, it's hard you can make a case either way for sure let us know in the comments what you think and as always thank you for watching the video please like comment and subscribe and check us out on audio where you listen to podcasts have a great week peace sounds good <laughs>